Now, you can see there's an obvious problem. His foot is cut off, which is kind of killing the shot. But there's a lot of good things here, including two eyes and a ball, which is a very, very important thing. We're going to use camera raw for this one. It's the same as Lightroom's develop module, so don't let it throw you off. First off, let's go see what landscape looks like. It looks better. Hit auto. That looks better. And the color is a little funky. This happens a lot when you're shooting football because, like, he's backs to the sun and the, the auto white balance on your camera makes you think it's makes the camera think that it's blue. Like this is bluish and let's just move the uh, white balance. I just look at the clothes and try to make them look whiter, right? They're just the, they're supposed to be, it's a white Jersey. And let me see if I can go a little this way. Just trying to get that Jersey looking whiter. All right, let's do a split here so you can see. So it's much warmer picture, but you see how blue that was? Like there's like blue in everything, right? His helmet should be silver. It shouldn't be silver with a hint of blue. Now his uniform is purple. So our, our color is much better. And this is a very common thing I see that people aren't really covering, which is getting the color. You got to get your color right. If your color's not right, it's wrong. So that's why. All right. Let's go to the shadows and open them up a little bit. All right, just so you can see more of his face. And I probably would go get the masking tool, get the brush, crease the exposure a bit. And I would probably, maybe even the shadows, and just pull his face out a little bit. I mean, he's the hero of the shot. There we go. I think that looks much better. All right, so we're getting there. All right. I would like to see the background more blurry, but first we, we do have kind of a composition issue here. We don't need to see that much of the, of the goalpost. We, we know it's football. I think we can still get it down there. It still looks like a goalpost and you're not seeing as much of this distracting stuff. And you have to crop it kind of this way. And I don't like to get him too close to the edge, but you have to decide what you're going to do with this other player. So let's just drop it there. And we already have a much stronger image zoomed in like this, I still want him to be brighter. So here's what we could do. Go to masking, go to create a new mask, and let's choose select subject. And there you go. It selected him perfectly. Go down to shadows, open it up a little, and maybe exposure, something like that. Just, he needs to be a bit brighter, I think. All right. The biggest problem here is, of course, this foot being cut off, but we're going to fix that. We're going to go to the crop tool and we're going to make sure up here at the top of the screen, we have our fill set to generative expand. And we are going to expand. Actually, we can go a little bit both directions, maybe right there. Hit return. Don't type anything in. Don't do anything. Don't touch anything. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. In approximately 12 seconds, there's his foot. There's the shadow. Come on. That's freaking amazing. The way it does all that stuff is incredible. Now, you'd have to ask yourself about this guy over here. Shall we try it? Should we just give it a try? Because we can always just say no. Let's go and see how much. Maybe we get that much. Hit generate. Let's just see. It could work. I mean, the other one worked absolute miracles. You never know. Let's go see. Gosh. <laughs> well, now that it's gone that far, I want the rest of his foot. Ah, we can't make the photo too wide. Then it'll be a pano. But you know it would do it. You know it would do it. Let's just do it. Come on. Come on. It's like I've been saying, this is an image composition saver. Let's go. Because I want to see that second player. I don't want to see his foot cut off. Because this is a good shot. I love the expression of the... Okay, that foot's funky. Let's check second variation. Better foot. Third variation. You could probably get rid of away with either number two or number three. They're not great cleats. But you could hit generate and let's try it again. Hey, I like that one. I like that cleat. Let's look at another one. No. No, yes. All right, I'm going with that. That would be my picture because you're not looking at this guy's foot anyway, right? You're looking right here. I think that's our picture. 
Uh, what I would do to finish this off, of course, so let's flatten it. Now, I would probably add one more thing, actually. I would probably go and very subtly go down here to effects, and I would take my vignetting to minus 11. Now, you're going to think, well, that didn't do anything at all, Scott. Why would you even do that? Watch. It did do something. It took the heat off the edges all the way around. It darkened the edges all the way around. Put your focus on the scene. I love it. Oh, we do have a goal post that needs some work here. That's unfortunate. Now, what could we do to fix that goal post? Well, you could take this goal post over here. I got to fix that goal post, right? Take this goal post over here. Add a feather so you don't see the hard edges. So let's put a 20 pixel feather. I don't know. Press Command J on Mac or Control J on Windows to put just that little piece over here. And we're going to have to rebuild the goal post. We're going to have to actually just, oh, it's going to have to come out like over here, isn't it, to look accurate. Oh, what a pain in the butt. All right. So you're getting the idea of what I'm going to wind up doing over here. We're going to extend this over and then go up. So let's go over here, get the clone stamp tool. That I, I'm going to be the hero of the grown, the clone stamp needs someone to remind the world how awesome it is. This is such a great tool. It picks up and clones things over and it's so handy. I use it every single day. Let's make it a little smaller, bring this over. And then we're gonna clean these other two up. I wanna merge these two together. I'm gonna press command E on Mac or control E on Windows. So those two are on their own layer. And then we're gonna take a little bit of this stuff and clone it right over that stuff so it doesn't look so obvious stuff. And we'll get some of this, because the trees are different over here. And we're just, this is not working out as beautifully as I'd hoped, but we're gonna fix it all. Yeah, I would take a minute to do this right, which I'm not doing it right, but that's, it's in the ballpark. I'm, I'm kind of going quickly. And then lastly, I would go in here and drop the, uh, Topaz sharpen in here and sharpen it up. Oh yeah, that did a nice job. That did it. Oh, look, it got rid of some of the noise, sharpened up the image, still looks sharp. You can still read the words, click okay. And that would be our final image. There's our original photo and there's our finished photo. So you can see how, see how blue that shot was, right? You know, if you were going to do anything else to this, <laughs> I might go one step further. I might go to the neural filters. I might go down here to depth blur. I might focus subject. Let's increase the blur strength to really blur that background because that like tent over there is not helping the shot. Just trying to put a little more blur on that background. And let's look at it before and after. See the difference in the bokeh or the bokeh, whichever you prefer. Yeah, now you got that pro look. Let's click OK. All right, and let's look at the difference here, there to there. Look at that. Looks like you got an f2.8 lens on that thing now. Woo!